Our solid state battery, they have one drawback, I'm sure everyone knows. They require pressure. They require two megapascal pressure, constant pressure in order to perform. Okay. So that's why OEM hesitate to use this because they have to put a complicated system in the vehicle to put the pressure. We came and we developed a module, as you can see at the module. These module, is, they are very packed and also they can apply fi up to five megapascal pressure. As far as I know, we are the first one we are offering this. Hi, I'm Joel Frankie. I'm here at the Battery Show in Detroit. I'm here with Rashid from Scheffler. Rashid, it's very nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Joel. Um, so can you tell everyone what you, what you do with the company? And then I think today we're going to talk about solid state battery technology, right? Yes, that's okay. right. Okay. This is Rashid Ferrati, um, VP of the Corporate Competence Center for Americas. And one of the group we have, we are focusing on development of next generation battery, which is all solid state battery. Yeah, there is a joke, I'm sure everyone knows. All solid state, I'm sure everyone knows. They say, always they say, in five years, five years. But this time, we want to make it happen. So first, most people, they know what is the all solid state battery and what is the advantage. Let me just summarize what it is. Okay. We put two things here. Maybe you can see it in video. Yeah. One shows the what batteries exist. We call it liquid electrolyte existing one. If you see the volume compared to all solid state battery, which we eliminate the graphite, which is almost comes to about the depends of design, 50% of the yeah. battery. So by replacing this graphite and putting anodeless or metallic anode, very thin one anode, we can save 40 to 50% volume. So that's one advantage. That means, so what does it mean? Size. Weight and size immediately. Weight and size. Okay. Weight and size mean if you have the same weight, you have longer range, or if you want to make it the same range, you have lighter battery. Now, there is another advantage. One advantage is, second advantage, inside the liquid, there is liquid which is flammable. So you have, you have fuel, if there is any spark happens inside or outside, then you have fire. Mm -hmm. So in solid state, we replace all the liquid and we add all solid, no even one drop of liquid. Again, there is a terminology. Some people, they say it, almost solid state battery. That means there is some liquid inside. That some liquid, again, makes it dangerous. But in our case, it's all solid state. There is no liquid. So in that case, the safety of the all solid state is much better than the existing one. So there are two big advantage for all solid state. And the third one, because of that the flammable, we avoiding that one, we can raise the temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius. In normal battery, you cannot go over than 40 degrees Celsius. You have to have very big thermal management system to cool down mm -hmm. and that thermal management system which we have it by the way here it takes time uh, space and um, uh, weight and money we can eliminate that so we don't need that you can you can run it up to 100 degrees Celsius so those is advantage of the all solid state you can actually charge it faster too right throw yes. a lot more power at it that's correct the reason we are not worried about the fire we yeah. are not worried about the that in that case, and also since it's anodeless, we can charge it faster. And that's the relative to existing one. Correct. Okay, so that's the features and benefits you described. Correct. Okay. Um, anything else up here we should we should cover today? So here, um, again, Scheffler is not just one me too for solid state. Yeah. There are many uh, other company, especially small startups working on this also. But Scheffler is started because we, as you can see, we are in electric vehicle. Yeah, and all electric vehicle performance dominate by battery. Mm -hmm. So we looked what is the next generation and we find that's all solid state. That's why we developed, designed the chemistry, but that's not exactly what we wanted. Okay. We developed our knowledge here, then we made the main problem which OEM they had. 
All solid state battery, here actually one of the one we made, one amp power is all solid state. They have one drawback, I'm sure everyone knows. They require pressure. They require two megapascal pressure, constant pressure in order to perform. Okay. So that's why OEM hesitate to use this because they have to put a complicated system in the vehicle to put the pressure. We okay. came, even before making this one in production, we came and we developed a module, as you can see at the module. These module, is, they are very packed and also they can apply up to five megapascal pressure. They can control the pressure, they control the volume. This is something you cannot find it out. As far as I know, we are the first one we are offering this. Okay. And we did not just assembly, we learned from inside the chemistry of all solid state and we developed this precise module. How to control it and even we, in one case we can control pressure, in other case we can do a constant pressure. Okay. So this module is pretty unique and we have different uh, portfolio. Mm -hmm. We have active uh, pressure control, we have passive pressure control. Also, our solid state battery has those advantages I said. Another one is we can use biopolar. In liquid, we cannot use bipolar for many reasons. For in our solid state, we can use bipolar. Here, this small battery, this is all solid state, and the voltage is 32 volt. 32 volt, one single cell. So that is very good advantage for this one. Actually here, I can show you here. So this is one of the advantage. Even we made some of the samples here. This is like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. You can use as a construction and each of them is solid state battery. So you can make, this is three battery, you can tie it together and we can make any structure. You use uh, hoses in the, any, any in battery. In this one, if it's hollow, this is one solid state battery. And this one, you can get 3.75 volt. So if you notice, it's curved. Our solid state battery, it can bend. Oh. So this, with our solid state battery, you can get a lot of advantage. One more thing I want to say is. Of course. Automotive is one of our target to make it this. But last year we find for humanite, our solid state battery is Perfect. Why is that? Because in humanite, we want to reduce the weight. You want to use the hours, working mm -hmm. hours. Second, you want to be, you want to have a safe battery. You don't want to keep the humanite in your home, take care of the kid, and catch fire. Mm -hmm. So safety is very important in humanite. And at the end, fast charging, longer distance density. So this design for humanite. And we're gonna show it this one in later, in different kind of humanite, that's the one is gonna come. That's excellent. Yeah. Thank you, Rashid. Yes, very thank nice you. to meet you. We are still in the Scheffler booth, and I'm here to talk with Jerry today. Jerry, nice pleasure, man. Joel. Yeah. Um, so we're standing in front of a side-by-side. -side. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Sure, yeah, so a side-by-side is an exciting vehicle, um, but what Scheffler has done here is we have integrated some of the technologies that we have developed for both on-road and off-road and okay. put it all together into this one-of-a-kind unique vehicle. Okay. So one of the first things that we did was we wanted to electrify it. So we took an e-axle that we had developed for another application and we put it on here so that we've got uh, the ability to have super torquey power uh, all in, in a fun and exciting side-by-side. We needed a charging infrastructure for that, so we integrated a, a charging system and the control systems and, uh, and algorithms to be able to support that. And then the power electronics to be able to run the battery management systems, the okay. e-axles, and, and the inverter. 
With all of that, we made a fun and exciting vehicle and that generates a lot of heat. So we then had to add in a thermal management system to mm -hmm. be able to control the heat that's made in the battery system, the E-axles, as well as the inverter. Okay. So it's a fully integrated system uh, with all Scheffler products makes a one-of-a-kind, fun and exciting vehicle. That sounds like a lot of fun. Can we go for a ride later in this Absolutely, thing? absolutely. <laughs> so I got a question for you, because I um, I just talked with Rashid. Yeah. Are you guys using the solid-state technology in this now, or is that a plan? So this one is a lithium-ion uh, okay. based vehicle. Um, we haven't scaled up the solid-state batteries enough to get to a full vehicle demonstration, but that is a step that could come in the, in the future for us to be able to make a full vehicle battery pack assembly. and. Who knows? Maybe it'll end up in here. Okay, yeah? cool. Nice to meet you, Jerry. Thanks, Joel. All Appreciate right. the yeah. time. All right, bye. This is Micah. Micah, it's really nice, nice to, meet to meet you. you Micah, so we're staring at a motor here, right? Yep. Okay, can you tell us, you know, a little bit more about yeah, this? absolutely. Okay. So this is actually just the rotor half of the motor. So okay. what you're not seeing here is the stator portion, the outer portion that's typically fixed to your housing or whatever. Um, so this is uh, an externally excited synchronous motor or electrically excited synchronous motor. Okay. Whichever you prefer is kind of a synonymous terminology there. Um, but what this is, is a magnet-free rotor. So with everything going on um, in the world, the regulations, the you know, geopolitical, whatever, there's opportunities for getting magnets out of motors. And magnets are one of the you know, really high cost things, mm -hmm. um, hard to reuse or recycle. Um, and so there's definitely a lot of um, draw towards something like this where you can replace the magnets, you can get uh, similar or the same kind of performance in terms of power and torque density and efficiency. Um, so it's kind of a, a cool uh, technical solution in, in a way to remove magnets from a design. Sounds like a move in the right direction. Yeah, okay. so the, the heavy rare earths are the, you know, the kind of the buzzword that you hear okay. that people want to get out because it's just, like I said, the, the cost and, you know, it's kind of limited to where you can get those. Okay, well great, yeah. thank you. I've got Mitch, Mitch, nice Hi. to meet you. Thank so you we've got, well. it looks like we've got about half a dozen different things here to look at. Yeah, of course, so as Scheffler, right, we're obviously working directly on the batteries, but we're also working on a lot of things that go in or around the batteries as well. So I'll start here with some of our thermal management components. Uh, this here is a battery immersion cooler working with oil directly, transmitting that heat between oil and the coolant itself via heat in heat exchanger all tied directly together into one compact unit mm -hmm. and this is made to go directly into the battery pack itself to make okay. sure that it's able to uh, get that heat, minimize the amount of dielectric fluid in the uh, battery as well, that this stuff's expensive, so yeah. trying to minimize this as much as we can while also keeping it fully separate from the coolant side of things which is then attaching to all the different components in the vehicle that take that heat and go do something with it. Uh, yeah. warming up other areas or removing that heat via radiators or other sources. Okay. And we do a lot of these styles of product. This is just one style of product, but we have a plethora of different pumps, valves, refrigerant technologies, all of these different types of things. Because every the, the one thing true about electric vehicles is everybody wants to do it a different way. There are different reasons to do it different ways. And so we try to, to, to work with that as much as we can with a Excellent. lot of different technical products. Okay. On top of that, we have other things that then sense and control around the battery, can be used to control thermal management, can be used to control the battery itself. This is a uh, current sensor and a uh, sensor of battery life for each individual cell of the battery itself. So going in and checking every individual cell, making sure that each cell is the right uh, current, it's, it's aging the way we expect, all of those different types of things, trying to minimize and control the batteries as much as we can. We also have thermal runaway devices. These thermal runaway devices are basically safety features, right? You need to make sure that those cells aren't going to have any sort of special events, or if they are, mm -hmm. you warn passengers in a significant amount of time that they can be safe, get out of the vehicle, do whatever they need to do. So our pressures, uh, these sensors here, these battery life sensors, go in and can measure humidity, temperature, pressure, all of these different things around the battery that then helps go in and say, hey, this is uh, maybe an event or not. So we have these different uh, sensors that can go into cells, into battery packs, to try to make sure that they understand what's happening in the battery mm -hmm. cell. And then we also make full battery management control units. So these are units that go in and they read from all the different types of sensors that we make, that anybody else makes, that whatever, and take all of that information onto one integrated circuit board and can 
uh, take decisions if it needs to, okay. can also just relay information to other systems that then can make decisions with mm -hmm. more of the picture even. But these battery control units can take and control all of the different pieces of feedback that we get from the battery from all of our different sensors. Okay. And these work on multiple different voltage ranges. They can also be paired with inverters. They can be paired with DC-DC converters, all of these other things that we also make in-house. Mm -hmm. Or they can be separate and just control the battery itself if, if that's what uh, that's our customers desire. are interested sure. in. And then finally here, we're also working, um, Scheffler at its core was a, was a stamping company and it still is, and it's a metal forming company. So today we're working uh, on making cases for prismatic cells. So what that is, is a simple sheet metal, but we go in and we do have a lot of special technologies and patents on these to make sure that we're as light as possible, using as little material as possible, while still making sure that that cell uh, that battery cell is as protected as possible from road loads, environment, all of these different types of things. And we do special welding with these. We do um, to, to both cap then the cells into the different designs. So you can see a cap on this side. And then for the other side here, you can see we also have safety features integrated as well as connections. So these are contacts for the battery cell itself, uh, contacts to the outside. And then you'll notice in the middle here, this is a specific vent that we use such that if ever the cell were to get too much pressure and could potentially damage the cell, we can uh, break this here. Okay. And then we have also ways to specifically sense that that's happened, make sure that we uh, quickly you know, rectify the situation in whatever way we need to, okay. um, or at least allow the vehicle to know that that's happened and go from there. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you.